Hey there friends, so off the bat, I have to apologize for my voice. This past week, I actually got sick and completely lost my voice, and I have had struggles with it for literally almost a week now. But I need to get some cooking done, and I'm gonna take you with me today, whether or not I sound normal, <laughs> and I'm sorry if I don't. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut up these baguettes. These are actually gluten-free baguettes. We're going to do something really fun with them today. And I have some great ideas for you if you're looking for chicken recipes. I did a video last week where I kind of jazzed up some hamburger recipes. I'm trying to remember if it was last week or the week before. But I am showing you now some chicken recipes. We're going to try to take some kitchen staples like beef and chicken. Um, or ground beef per se and make them a bit more interesting and give you some new ideas and some new life to those ingredients. So the reason I'm cutting up the baguettes here is because we are actually going to make some incredible chicken sliders here in a little bit and we do eat a lot of gluten free in our house, we have a gluten-free, or I should say a gluten sensitivity. Sorry, my brain is a little bit scrambled today. <laughs> but I couldn't really find small like buns to make sliders for the chicken. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna get these baguettes, we're gonna cut them up, and they're gonna work perfectly to make these fantastic chicken sliders. I'm also going to be cutting them obviously open so that we can put all of our sandwich or slider ingredients on the inside. And this is working out really great. So if you need some smaller buns for something that is gluten-free, but you can't find gluten-free buns, maybe try baguettes because this is going to be great. It's really soft too, almost like a bun. So it's going to mimic that perfectly. While I'm getting these sliced up, I'm just remembering I need to actually start my oven to 375 because we are going to have an oven dish going in there as well. Now, what we are going to be making with these sliders is a grilled chicken. And this obviously leans into the gluten-free friendliness of this dish as well, but it also, to me, speaks summer. And I've been all about the summer dishes lately and sharing lots of great summer foods with you all or spring and I have so much more coming in the next couple of weeks to share with you all. In case you missed last week's videos, I prepared to go to a cabin. So we went to the cabin. I actually was just starting to get sick as we were heading home from the cabin and it was a wonderful weekend as you all got to see a couple of snapshot pictures at the end of that weekend prep. And if you missed that, you can definitely go and check it out. We just had so much fun with family and food. And I know at one point my husband came around and said, I don't even know why, but I'm just continuously eating today. <laughs> Everybody brought a ton of food and it's just so much fun. And I had leftovers to come home with that we could eat. But I will say that I also had a lot less leftovers than I thought I would. So a lot of it got eaten up. Our family is getting bigger. We have new babies this year in our family and it's just taking more food every time we have an event or do something together. And it's just such a special thing that our family is continuing to grow. Okay, I have a big basket here that I store on top of my refrigerator and I'm going to actually put all of these in here and just cover them with a towel. I don't know exactly how many of these I'm going to need because it's in comparison to a large pack of like Hawaiian rolls. So we are just going to stick them in here, whatever we don't use. My daughters will probably enjoy putting peanut butter and jelly on or toasting and making some honey bread or something like that. Um, so we'll see. It depends on how much chicken I do and how it all comes together with the quantities of each item that goes on to the little sandwiches. And these look so delicious. This is definitely down my husband's alley. He really loves chicken sandwiches. And so I think this is going to be a great home run and something that we can replicate throughout the summer is doing grilled chicken sandwiches. I'm just gonna cover it with a towel a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect, but at least until we're ready to use them. 
All right, as usual, if you hear little sounds, it's just my dishwasher doing its work back here. But I was preheating the oven for an oven chicken dish and it's Hawaiian. So if you are Hawaiian or you know that I'm saying this incorrectly, please correct me in the comments. But I think it's called baked huli huli chicken. It's H-A-U-L-Y, I believe. I believe that's how I have it, or H-U-L-Y. I, H-U-L-I, I think that's right. I have to double check my recipe. Um, but it is a pineapple brown sugar style chicken and I'm so excited to make this. I feel like this is going to be so delicious. Such a great, again, summer style recipe. So I'm just cutting up a pineapple because we are going to use pineapple on it. I believe that the, the um, recipe I'm using calls for canned pineapple. But we like fresh pineapple around here and I think it's going to be really delicious. And I'm going to be using my grill for the sliders. So I thought, why don't I just grill up a little bit of pineapple to go with this great glazed chicken. I do not have a pineapple ring cutter. I was actually at a store earlier today that I could have gotten one and I forgot about it. And I told my daughter when I got home, I was thinking I need to get a pineapple corer so that I can make pineapple rings very easily. But for now, just use the knife and trim away the excess prickly part that's really hard for us to eat as humans. <laughs> All right, and then I am thinking I might just cut, instead of trying to cut through the center of this with the knife. I think I'm just going to cut it in half and do slices that are half pieces of the pineapple. And then we're going to get that on the grill. Speaking of the grill slash smoker, we have a, a smoker that obviously can also be a grill. I need to go out and actually get that preheating once I'm done slicing up this pineapple. This looks so good. It looks very, very ripe and I think that it had the perfect amount of time to sit before I made this recipe. Now I'm only going to use, I think about half of the pineapple for the chicken and then the other half I'm gonna cut up and my kiddos will enjoy that with our dinner tonight just cold. Um, like I said, we love pineapple. All right, so for the Hawaiian chicken, we're gonna go ahead and get a sauce started. It calls for a cup of pineapple juice. I have these little jars or cans of pineapple juice and they're six ounces. So I'm just gonna add an extra little dash of broth to the, the sauce just to make sure we've got enough liquid going on. And you're gonna start this on medium heat. And then I have a half cup of brown sugar that I'm gonna put in the pan as well. And then we're also going to add in a half cup of soy sauce. Now, I like to use coconut liquid aminos. Um, I used to use the Bragg's uh, just regular liquid aminos. Then I found out that it still does have soy in it and I try to limit our soy. We do eat things with soy every once in a while, but I just know that this has a little bit more health benefits for us. So we're gonna do half a cup of that. Plus, I personally like the flavor of this a bit better than the regular soy sauce. So we've got that going in. We're also going to do, I need to grab my third cup measure. We're gonna do a third cup of ketchup and good old Aldi's organic tomato ketchup is fantastic. Doesn't have any of the corn syrup in it. So love grabbing that. I took you all with me to Aldi the other day and a lot of you said that your countries have Aldi. Apparently it's a very German store and quite a few other countries <laughs> that you all said they're very popular in. So that's really neat to hear. And then I'm also going to do half a cup. It's supposed to be chicken broth, but I accidentally grabbed and opened a jar of beef broth. So we are going to roll with it. I'm just going to stick it right in here. Then I've got sesame oil here. We're going to do about two teaspoons of sesame oil. I love anything with sesame oil in it. 
So usually I've got my pre-minced garlic in the freezer frozen, but guess what you guys, I am out and I need to get some prepped up sometime soon, but I'm just going to go ahead and mince two cloves of garlic to go in to this sauce that we are making. And I love this little rocking garlic press. It's so nice and really easy to clean compared to the good old fashioned like pampered chef style garlic press. And then I do have some frozen minced ginger. So we need a little bit of that as well. We're gonna put all this into the sauce. I used to use garlic and onion powder all the time. I used to use a lot more powdered um, spices, but the longer I cook, the more I feel like it is just key to having fresh spices and other flavors going into your sauces and dishes. And I think that whenever you visit a very authentic restaurant and that's what they do, you find out that that's where the really good flavors come from. So this recipe does call for about two tablespoons of grated ginger. So I'm gonna put a nice amount in there. I'm going to use my curly whisk here. I'll try to remember to leave this and the garlic press linked below. They're both little kitchen tools that I really enjoy. So we're gonna let this heat up and we're going to mix together a cornstarch mixture to thicken this. Okay, for some reason I've been using cornstarch pretty frequently <laughs> the last couple videos, but I'm going to show you the exact same method. I'm just taking a little bit of broth and again, I'm kind of using this as my addition to the six ounces of juice because we need a little extra liquid. I'm adding a tablespoon of cornstarch into the cold broth, not into the hot pan, and I'm just using an old lid and ring. We're gonna just shake this up and then we're able to add it in to our sauce over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add it in and that frozen ginger is starting to break up in there. Oh wow, this is going to make the house smell absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna add this right into our sauce and just whisk it as I go, as I'm pouring it in. And then I'm just going to keep an eye on it and just keep stirring it um, while I'm working on some other stuff here. Okay. So we're gonna cover that up, just let it start to simmer. Now I have a greased cookie sheet here and we are going to go ahead and put the chicken on it. This takes around three pounds of chicken, I think mine's a little bit more than three pounds, of skin on, bone in, chicken thighs. We're just going to space those out nicely on the pan. And then once our sauce, brine, whatever you wanna call, what we're cooking back here <laughs> is done. And once it's kind of thickened and simmered a little bit, we're gonna pour it over top of our chicken in this pan. And in the meantime, I'm gonna pop out and actually start the smoker slash grill to work on our sliders. The grill is started on preheating, but in the meantime, this sauce is thickened and ready to be poured over our chicken. And I did grease this pan and I also put some hot pads underneath of it because this is going to be a hot liquid going on here. And depending on what your table or countertop or workspace is, you definitely don't want something really hot going directly on it. So we're going to go ahead. Oh, wow. Like if you could only smell this, this is so good. I am going to need to save this sauce recipe just for like putting over top of fried rice or something. It smells so yummy. And it's definitely going to make a fantastic glaze on this chicken. So I am reserving part of the sauce to baste it about halfway through the baking process. And it is going to bake for about 45 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it in to the oven down here since we are pretty well preheated and start baking.
All right, so to make our sliders, we are going to be using some chicken tenders, again, like I said, on the grill, and we're going to make a blackening seasoning for them. If I go out to eat, I really enjoy ordering something blackened, just super delicious. It has a whole other set of flavors, and ah, it's so yummy. I'm so excited to try out the seasoning. So what it has in it is it has some smoked paprika, that's actually the main base of it is the smoked paprika and that is one of my favorite seasonings. This also calls for cayenne but because I've got some little people that would not appreciate that very much, <laughs> I'm not going to be adding that in. It'll have enough of a kick with the paprika for sure. And then I'm adding some onion powder, some garlic powder, and I also have oregano here and thyme. And the reason I'm doing it in a large Ziploc bag, I am out of black pepper in that, I'll have to get some other, um, is because we're going to throw the chicken right in here and it's going to make it easy to rub it onto the chicken without making a huge mess. So I'm going to need to grab my black pepper that I have in storage because I just realized that my black pepper is out and black pepper is so important for a blackening seasoning. And so I'm just gonna get my other black pepper here in a minute. But all we're gonna do is take that those spices and we're going to go ahead and shake it around right in the bottom of the bag. So then all we have to do is put the tenders right inside of here and start to mix it all together. Okay, I grabbed my black pepper salt shaker just so I didn't have to go to the cellar for the moment. And I'm just shaking this all together. This already is so aromatic, just mixing these spices. And then I'm going to put my chicken tenders in here. Now this recipe calls for two pounds of the chicken. And I think it's gonna make a good amount of sliders. I think that I'm pretty spot on with the amount of the baguettes I sliced up. And I think it's gonna be pretty close. So chicken tenders are so convenient for sliders and things like that because they are so tender. And they'll be easy to just bite right into. I'm gonna wash this hand. That's something you don't see often <laughs> in my videos is me pausing, stopping to wash things or to sanitize things because especially when it comes to chicken. Chicken is something that can very easily spread germs. Okay, so as you can see, I'm coating everything really well. This actually has a lot of seasoning in it which I would expect from a blackening recipe. So I failed to mention what these sliders are called, and that is they are a BLT honey mustard chicken slider. Doesn't that just sound like a great combination? So obviously to make the BLT part of it, we definitely need some bacon. So before I go and put the tenders and the pineapple, for the Hawaiian chicken onto the grill. I'm going to go ahead and put my bacon in the air fryer because it does take a little bit. I think it's about 30 minutes or so, depending on what setting my air fryer is on um, and how much bacon I have in here. It can take about that long. And so while we're grilling, I figured why not do this? The last recipe I am making today is also going to be chicken. Like I said, we're gonna have some fun chicken recipes. So I'm actually going to take a couple chicken breasts and throw them on the grill as well for the last recipe I'll be showing you later on. So once we have these put in here, I'm gonna head down to the grill. All right, we are gonna put everything on to the smoker. And I'm gonna start out with the pineapple. And I do have a meat um, temperature thermometer. So I like to check my chicken whenever I'm doing chicken. I just don't 
trust myself on knowing when to pull it off. And if you leave it on too long, it dries it out. So my fail safe method <laughs> is to just simply check it. All right, ooh, they are just sizzling away. I'm gonna do this as quickly as I can so that the temperature doesn't drop too fast on the smoker. And obviously this is in grill mode. I have the temperature up as high as a grill. So it's not like it's going to be smoking it like we would a long smoke. Um, but it is still using wood pellets to make it. So it gives it that great flavor. All right, now we're gonna throw on our tenders that have the blackened seasoning on them and I just left them right in my Ziploc bag, which is great, less dishes for me. And I'm done with all of this. As summertime is coming on, I'm being a lot more mindful of when we have this thing running and what else I might wanna grill for later in the week you know, do it all at once. We do have a nice sized smoker here, so I can fit a pretty good amount of meat or veggies on here. And I just don't always think about it when we're making supper, you know, that I could be throwing something on for lunch the next day too. So it's one of those things I've been trying to remember as these warmer months are on us and we're doing a whole lot more grilling. And like I said, I have some chicken breast here that I'm throwing in as well for the next recipe that we will be making. So we have a nice loaded grill. In case you've never grilled pineapple, it does not take long at all. And you can end up with some very mushy pineapple <laughs> if you don't keep your eye on them. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and flip them over. We're not looking for it to be super, super soft, but just to have a little bit of that smoky flavor from the wood pellets and have some grill marks, of course. Gotta have that great presentation when it comes to delicious meals like this. Okay, our bacon is out. The chicken is grilling, I'm kind of checking on it. And we're going to go ahead and get the rest of everything ready for our sliders because it's gonna be kind of a very fast assembly when it all comes together. So I have some purple onion and I have a tomato. And because our family is not going to eat all of these in one meal, I'm not going to get enough toppings for all the sliders, but enough for us to eat for dinner here after a while. So I'm just slicing up some tomato. Besides the chicken, we're gonna have bacon. We're going to have some cheese. We have some Colby Jack cheese here. And then some purple onion and some lettuce. And um, I love purple onion on things. And so does my husband. So I definitely think this is gonna be a huge hit with him. He is going to be home from work here soon and we're gonna get to enjoy these together for dinner. And I have a couple side suggestions for you all for this meal. I need to get these thinner. Um, and that is go with cold salads. So we are actually going to have, I have a macaroni salad in the refrigerator and a potato salad. We usually do both because my one daughter can't always have macaroni salad if it's not made with gluten-free noodles. So we're gonna do um, that those as sides but since this is very much like a barbecue style meal, I would highly suggest doing fresh fruit, watermelon, and that type of a thing. As far as sides for the Hawaiian chicken, um, definitely roasted potatoes um, or baked potatoes, baked sweet potatoes would be really delicious with that. And any other roasted veggies, roasted carrots would be really good with that as well. 
I almost should have gotten my mandolin out. I'm blinking back some tears with this onion. I almost should have gotten my mandolin out to um, slice those a bit thinner, but I think they'll be good. All right, so now I'm just gonna get out this Colby Jack cheese. And this was, I believe the recipe creator's suggestion was Colby Jack cheese. So I'm going to just slice it into small slices so we can put it on every single sandwich because the cheese will go on all sandwiches um, along with the bacon and this sauce that's sitting right here. So I could not find it. There is a Sweet Baby Ray's mustard chicken sauce, um, but I found the Sweet Baby Ray's Ray's chicken sauce and the first ingredient or one of the first ingredients is yellow mustard. So I believe it's very close to this and this is the recommended sauce for these sliders. Okay, I just pulled the Hawaiian chicken out of the oven. It looks and smells so good and I'm just taking a little bit of the sauce and drizzling it over the top. I did stop at one point in the middle of it baking and I did add more sauce to the tops of these as well. So this is really the third time they're getting sauce. And I'm just gonna show you how I would be serving this. We're gonna eat this along with the sliders for supper. And then the third recipe I will be kind of meal prepping for tomorrow to show you all. But I would just take the pineapple and sort of weave it in to the sheet. Ooh, got a little here. And that way the pineapple gets a little bit of that sauce as well. And just laying it right in. I love the charred bits in here too. Just adds a whole other dimension to what we're doing. I'm gonna plop some of these right on top of the chicken. And wow, doesn't this just look amazing? <laughs> it just screams summer barbecue or summertime. And then of course we can cut the pineapple up with the chicken as we're eating it all together. Okay, so an ingredient that I need for our third recipe, and I'm making, I was thinking about chicken recipes that have stuck with me through the years, even maybe something my mom made that we really loved, and something that we love is something called Chicken Eddie. And it's so good, if you know what I'm talking about, you know, and everybody makes it a little different, I'm gonna show you how we like to make it. But one of the things that we need for that recipe that I do not have in my kitchen is some cream of tomato soup. It's something I don't make it a habit of buying and it's so simple to make up. I'm actually just looking for my recipe for it here. So all you need is some broth. So if you're gonna make cream of chicken soup, maybe I said cream of chicken soup. I meant cream of, cream of mushroom soup. If I said that, I'm sorry, correction. Cream of mushroom soup. And I have mushroom broth here. I like to can mushrooms, home canned mushrooms. Not everybody does that, I understand, but we do. And so I save the broth. And it's this great brown, rich broth that I can make a really, really good cream of mushroom soup with a few simple ingredients. Okay, so here I've melted six tablespoons of butter. And then over here I've got water going for the spaghetti noodles. And to the six tablespoons of butter for the mushroom soup, I'm gonna be adding six tablespoons of flour, and I'm just using a gluten-free, the King Arthur gluten-free flour. And I'm gonna be whisking this together to make it like a little bit thicker, that's what we're wanting. So as I whisk this, it's going to get very cakey and thick in the bottom of my saucepan here. And then to this, I'm going to be adding in a cup of the mushroom broth. And I'm just gonna keep on whisking. And then to this mixture, I'm going to add a cup of milk as well. And just kind of keep everything whisking as it gets thicker. 
And then I'm gonna add some salt and pepper to this as well. And we've got ourselves some cream of mushroom soup. All right, we've got everything kind of coming together at once with the sliders and the chicken eddy. So I'm gonna be using the Jovial Spaghetti that is gluten-free. I really like this brand. They seem to have very reliable ingredients. And my water is at a boil. I'm just going to read the box here and see how long I need to boil it for. It says about 11 minutes. So I'm going to add these in. And as my daughters would say, don't break them. <laughs> they love the long noodles. So we're gonna let them cook for just a minute here and then I will push them down in as they get soft. I'm gonna set my timer for about 11 minutes. We'll let those cook up. I've got my mushroom soup back here that I pulled off of the heat and that will be ready to go whenever we're ready to add it into the noodles. So to go in to the chicken eddy, the chicken eddy, I just feel like there's so many different variations. Like I said earlier, you could use different cheeses. You could use a chicken um, cream soup as a base. There's just a lot you could swap out. Some people, like I read on the recipe that I will leave linked below, like to put green bell pepper into it. Um, we personally like peas. That's how I grew up, is putting peas in the chicken eddy. So there's just so many different things you can do to it, but essentially it is a cream sauce with spaghetti noodles and chicken, and then you can go from there. <laughs> so I have a white cheddar that I'm going to shred up here. We're going to keep a little bit out to top it off in a nine by 13 pan, and then it can be baked and all cheesy and bubbly. So it's a little bit like an Alfredo sauce, but I would say with less garlic and um, Parmesan and things like that that are normally in a Alfredo sauce. This is more just cheesy and creamy and has the chicken and the peas. To be honest with you, I didn't realize that not everybody eats chicken eddy with peas in it. I thought that that was pretty much like a staple. So let me know in the comments if you like chicken eddy, what you put in it. And I can hear this water boiling. I'm gonna make sure everything is pressed down in. And actually I need to salt my water as well. Grab my salt up here. Salt the pasta water. Okay, so while we are kind of working on the chicken eddy, we're going to start into assembling the sliders. Now this has a whole entire system. I'd say system. <laughs> I need a cookie sheet. So we're gonna take a cookie sheet. I'm going to take the sliders. We're gonna lay them out on the cookie sheet. And I'm honestly just gonna put on here what seems to fit. I don't know if I have too much or not. We're gonna lay them open face. We're going to turn the oven on to a broil. And we are going to toast these in the oven. I am gonna make sure since this isn't just buns and it is the baguettes that I have like the right lid to the right bottom. <laughs> the right top and bottom of the pieces of buns. I think they'll all fit on here, I'm think, hoping anyways. And um, just laying them out and then we're going to toast the inside of them before we load them up with all of the fillings and the chicken and the sauce and whatnot. Okay, I do have a few left over. I'm gonna try to squeeze one more in here. And that's gonna have to be all we get out of it. And then the girls can make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with these or whatever they wanna use it for, my homemade jams. So I'm going to put these in for just a little bit to toast them. I'm checking on the buns. I am watching the pasta and we are going to take this chicken. So I took three chicken breasts and you had seen me put them on the grill 
And I'm just going to cut these up into small bite-sized pieces with my kitchen shears here. These are gonna go into the chicken eddy, and I figured why not have delicious grilled chicken in our chicken eddy today instead of just like shredded chicken. You could even grab a um, rotisserie chicken at the store to do this with as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and just chop it into kind of cube little size bites that'll be nice to swirl up the spaghetti noodles and pieces of chicken with. Do keep an eye on those slider buns when you are toasting them because once they start to toast, it just is like really, really fast. So I am going to stop here and open up my oven again and check them as I'm doing this. Oh, yep, they are ready. So I'm just gonna pull them out so you can see what they look like. And here we go. You can see how toasted and delicious they are. That only took a minute or two. I'm gonna set them aside for just a second while we finish chopping up this chicken so that it is ready to go when the noodles are done here in about three minutes is what we've got for those noodles. All right, so to assemble these, we're just gonna go through and we're going to flip over the top of the sandwich or the slider. So whichever one is the top, we're going to flip it over and sit it next to the bottom portion of the slider. So I'm just kind of hunting through here real quickly. And these smell so good. They smell so delicious toasted. Once you have them flipped over, we're going to open up this bottle. Oh, wow. Wow, that's incredible. We're going to take a piece of chicken and put it on each one. Then we're going to put a dollop of the sauce and then we're gonna put the cheese on. We're going to take, I made some garlic butter. It's just simply some minced garlic with butter. We're gonna put that over the top portion. We're gonna slide it all back in underneath the broiler so that the cheese melts and that the butter kind of gets toasty on the tops of the buns. All right, I'm waiting till the very last minute to put that sheet in to melt the cheese and everything on the sliders till we are ready to eat. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble my chicken eddy. And since I had just a little bit of the garlic butter left over, I'm actually gonna pour that in with my noodles before we start putting the rest of the things into this. And it will help to break up my noodles from sticking together to do that before I add in the cream soup and the cheese. All right, now that we have the butter all in there, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the chicken that we made up. And I'm going to add our cream soup in here as well. Pour that right in over top of it all. So yummy.
And then we're gonna take about half of the cheese that I shredded. So last night we actually had peas with our dinner. And so I have some made up, otherwise I would dump just frozen peas in here. So I'm gonna add, um, let's see what about a cup looks like. Yeah, we're gonna go for maybe a little less than two cups of peas and a bunch just hit the floor. Our dog's gonna like that because these do have some butter on them. All right, so now I'm just gonna take this big spoon and stir it all together. <laughs> So great, so delicious. Like just seeing this brings back such memories from my childhood. So you can definitely just serve it like this, but I'm gonna do a baked version for our dinner tomorrow night. And so I'm going to just put this into a nine by 13 once I have it stirred together here. I greased this nine by 13 and I'm just putting it all right in there. And just going to spread it out and then I'll top it off with the other half of the cheddar that I did not mix in. I did have a little taste of this. Oh my goodness, so good. And personally, I think it's even better with the homemade mushroom soup, cream of mushroom soup versus store-bought because of course, my mom would have used store-bought, um, mostly because she probably didn't think about the fact that she could make her own cream soups very easily with broth. And I will just let this cool and it'll be ready for our dinner tomorrow night. Okay, so these have went underneath of the broiler. You can see the cheese is melted. I'm just gonna pick a couple here on the front to actually put all the fillings in, because like I said, these here will be meal prepped for lunches and stuff this week. You're gonna add in some tomato. Oh, just so amazing. Look at that melting cheese. I mean, my goodness. We're gonna add in a little bit of onion. I'm not gonna do an entire ring of onion for every single one. And then we will also be adding a little bit of lettuce to this as well whenever they're ready to eat it. And I have extra of the sauce as well. So, oh, just so great. And then we can't forget our bacon. That is the topper of it all with this. And I can already hear my family's response to these. My family is waiting and ready to eat their dinner, so I am gonna go. Thanks so much for watching today. Be sure to check out my last video here. I'm so glad you joined me today. I love hanging out with you all in the kitchen. I hope you found some new recipes and some new inspiration, and I'll see you all in my next video.